Hello, this is Pastor Andrew Grosjean from Canaan Baptist Church in Taylor, Michigan. And I want to give you the sermon summary for Sitting with Sinners. Now this is based out of Matthew chapter 9, verse number 9. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and saith unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. And if you look at verse number 11, it says, And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto the disciples, Why eateth your master with sinners and pub with publicans and sinners? Now, the question of this message is, how do we know when we should stay out of a uh, bad situation uh, being with the wrong kind of people, perhaps in the wrong place, with the wrong activities, and is there ever a time for allowing ourselves to go somewhere that usually we wouldn't go, uh, to be with people that perhaps we usually wouldn't be with. And here we see that Jesus did just that. He was with tax collectors. Uh, Matthew became one of his 12 disciples. And the reason why that was such a bad thing is because for the Jew in this day, a tax collector was considered a traitor to his people. And they were worse than the Gentiles. And yet Jesus was here eating with these publicans and with these sinners. Now, we see here that there are three reasons why Jesus was with Matthew that day. We see that, first of all, it was to call sinners to salvation. And we see this in verse number uh, 13 of Ma Matthew chapter 9. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So you see here that Jesus was in that house, um, eating with people that he usually wouldn't eat with, um, and in a situation that he wouldn't usually be in, because he was there to bring sinners to salvation. He went and saw the woman at the well, and um, would talk to her. Um, and that was something that just wasn't done because it's dangerous to be alone with a woman that is not your wife or your family and yet Jesus did meet with this woman because she needed to be saved and then also we're reminded of the woman um, who touched Jesus and uh, this also was a standard um, that a religious man wouldn't allow a woman who was not his wife or family to touch him and yet the woman in uh, Luke chapter 7 verse 38 was touching Jesus's feet because she was repenting of her sin and washing her his feet with her tears and drying them with her hair now why did Jesus allow that Ordinarily, he would have women touching him that um, were in his family in a casual or careless way. Uh, this is a standard that our society in modern day has forgotten. But Paul says uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 and 2, that a man should not touch a woman. It says it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And that in verse number 2, he says, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. So Paul puts forth the, the Christian standard that if, you're, if the woman is not your wife or obviously your family, uh, you shouldn't touch her. And yet Jesus allowed this. Why? Because he, it was an act of repentance. This woman wasn't acting lustfully. She wasn't acting wrongly. She was crying out for God's mercy. So there's a time to sit with sinners because a sinner needs salvation. We also see in Matthew chapter 9 that there's another reason why Jesus was there in the house. He said in verse number um, 12, But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, 
they that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. And so Jesus said that the second reason why you might need to be in a compromised situation is not so that you can compromise yourself, but rather so that you can heal the sick. And there is a time in which you may have to go into uh, places that are unsavory and uh, places that you don't want to be because you're rescuing someone who is in a dangerous place or an unhealthy place, either a physically unhealthy or a spiritually unhealthy place. Um, we see in Jude chapter 1 verse 22 that the Bible says, um, uh, and of some having compassion, making a difference, and others saved with fear, pulling them out, out of the fire, hating even the garment that is spotted by the flesh. There's plenty of things around us that are nasty and dirty, and in a spiritual way, there's so many things that are defiled, and yet we sometimes have to deal with those things to get them out of our lives and out of the lives of those that we love. There was a time in which a preacher did not have to talk about um, some of the wicked practices that are rampant in our country today. And a preacher could tell the Word of God completely without going into some of the things that have become commonplace. And yet today sometimes we have to name things that we wouldn't have had to 50 years ago because they're sin, because they need to be taken out so that people can be healthy inside and physically as well. So we see that sometimes that here Jesus sat with sinners because he was calling a sinner to salvation and he was calling the sick to health and also because he was calling a servant to be a disciple. We saw back in chapter up. Chap Matthew chapter 9 verse 9 that Jesus went into that situation to call Matthew to become his disciple and so we see that sometimes the um, the servant of God who will be a servant but right now is in an unhealthy place and in a dangerous situation Jesus called Matthew out of that and we also, as servants of God, need to call out those who will become also the servants and disciples of Jesus Christ. In Jude chapter 1 verse 24, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. See, God through all these things can protect us, can keep us from falling, can keep us faultless. So the question is then, how do you know when you should avoid an ungodly situation or ungodly relationships or friendships and when should you take take a, a part in, in a situation that normally you wouldn't be there for? Well, we, I'm reminded of Romans chapter 14 some people will have a clear conscience of eating that meat and others cannot eat that meat and have a clear conscience and so he says there in verse 23 and he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith for whatsoever is not of faith is sin he's saying if you eat something that um, your conscience tells you not to eat then you are condemned but if you can eat by faith then you're not condemned and so there's some things in this world that we can do if God gives us the peace to do it and that's how we know should we go into this place that perhaps is dangerous perhaps we'll see some things we shouldn't see or hear some things we shouldn't hear well the answer is is God calling us to? If he is, then he'll protect us through it. But beware, my friend, do not use your freedom in Christ as an opportunity to fulfill the lust of your flesh. Be careful. Do it by faith and not for the flesh.